So it all sounds quite worrying, doesn't it? We've discussed sea level rise and flooding, extreme weather, potential extinctions. Uh, but the last set of questions you've asked are much more optimistic. They're, they're about what you, what we, and what governments can do about climate change. And now let's hear from Samaya, Grace, and from the pupils in year five at St. Peter's. Hello, my name is Samaya Aslam. I'm from Lower Fleet Primary School. Um, so here's my question. How can we make the world a better place for us when we grow up? What is the one thing that would make the biggest difference to help to stop climate change that we should all start doing now? Can you reverse global warming? Well, Mark, we heard a question from Grace there, which was a short question, absolutely to the point, which is, can we reverse global warming? Well, I, I can give an equally short answer. And I believe certainly, yes, we can reverse it. Uh, but I will try and back that up with a little bit of evidence from the past. And uh, when I was doing some research in the early days, a lot of the focus was on the ozone hole. So I mentioned very early on about an ozone layer and how it protects us as part of this, this blanket. But there was a hole in the ozone layer caused by, by human activity. And as a result, once this was known, uh, the governments from around the world and people from around the world changed their habits and stopped releasing these harm harmful chemicals that were um, destroying the ozone layer. And now, 20 or more years later, um, we are quite pleased to report that the ozone hole, the ozone layer, I should say, is quite healthy. Um, and I believe it is just about closed, closed back up again in the Antarctic. So that is a clear example of when we work together, for the, for the right cause, uh, then we can uh, solve most issues. And I think that's the power of human endeavor. Uh, Emily, Samaya asked what I thought was a, a magnificent question. I mean, it's, it's a question that I think we should all ask ourselves all the time, which is how can we make the world a better place for us when we grow up? Yeah, it is a great question. And, and year five at St. Peter's also asked a question, you know, what single thing could we could we be doing? And I think the answer is there isn't a single thing. I'm going to give you three things that, that we could be doing um, and what and three things that you uh, young people could be doing. Um, so number one thing is uh, change the way we live our lives. And that doesn't mean change it in a really big way. It means doing things like eating a bit less meat. So one less beef burger a week um, would make quite a big difference. Eat more fruit and vegetables instead. Uh, we could walk and cycle a bit more than driving in the car. That would also make a, a difference. And in winter, stick on a, a sweater um, uh, so we don't need to turn the heating up as much. So that's the first thing, live life a little bit differently. The second thing that we can do is use our voices. We can uh, tell our parents and carers, we can tell our school, um, we can write to our prime minister and say, we want climate change to be taken seriously. We want action on climate change. And the third thing that we can do is we can help be part of the sort of create the solutions of the future. And that means um, uh, studying at school, studying science. And there's lots and lots of really exciting science that you can that you can study. And then um, in time, you can help uh, invent some of the solutions. You can invent ways of reversing climate change by taking uh, carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. So those are the three great things. Live life differently. Um, use your voice and then help create the solutions of the future. And in fact, actually, maybe even some of the young people listening today will be the leaders of the future that will help lead us into a, a greener, cleaner world in the future. Well, yes, Lindsay, actually, some of Emily's solutions, which, uh, you know, live a healthier life, uh, go walk a bit more, go on a bike a bit more, eat more fruits and vegetables, are actually things that, that should be enjoyable <laughs> for themselves in their own way. Uh, as well as being extremely helpful. Yes, I think that's absolutely right. And, and we mustn't get mired in doom because there's no point to that anyway. Uh, it's 
always good to be hopeful and optimistic because otherwise you if you don't believe you can make something better then why would you even try to and I think there's certainly plenty of evidence that even if we can't completely rewind the damage that's been done can we create a bright sustainable future a world that will still contain vast numbers of plants and animals that we can all enjoy yes of course we can do that one of the biggest changes I've seen in terms of the global warming in my lifetime has been the impact of children. When the children started the school climate strike, suddenly politicians went into an, an extra gear and they really do listen to you and they have listened to you. So you've already achieved a lot more than, than, than many of us have managed to achieve. So please don't give up. We absolutely need you. You are our future. Yes, actually, some of the questions um, uh, addressed to me were, what would I do if I was prime minister? And it's very nice of you to suggest that I might be prime minister. And, and I, I was going to say exactly what Lindsay had said, which is I would listen to you, uh, partly because uh, it is your world. And as one of my great heroes, Carl Sagan, used to say, um, what we adults are doing is we're custodians of the world and we're passing it on to you. And so we should pass it on in a good state. But secondly, I'd listen to you because you know what you're talking about, which I can see from the questions that you've asked. Um, I wanted to ask Mark, actually, um, for, for, your, for your opinion. We're getting towards the end now. So on this question of what we can all do to help make this situation better. Well, I, I completely agree with all that's been said before of things that we can do practically. Um, I suppose um, if there was one thing it would be effectively, and many of you are doing it already, is to shift the mindset, shift the way how we view the world and the environment. If you actually think about uh, the fact that the environment is, is, is our home collectively as people on this planet and animals and plants and, and everything else, and just thinking in terms in those, those terms, it, might, it will make you think about things like energy usage, um, and, and biodiversity and all the things we've been talking about. So I, and the, other, the second thing I suppose is, is to be inquisitive, which you're, you've obviously been doing already. Ask the questions and also be prepared to do some of the investigating yourself because not only will it help you get further along the way to understanding uh, the, the challenges with, with climate change, it would also, uh, that, that's also a good sign of a budding scientist. And we certainly need uh, more of those uh, in the future to help solve uh, many of the, the issues uh, that we that the world has. We, we ourselves couldn't solve them. We have to rely on uh, the, the, your generation, really, to solve some of the problems we're talking about today. So in that sense, I think it's, it's quite an exciting time to be a scientist um, because science is about solving problems. And there are plenty of issues that, that, we, that you can get involved in uh, over time. 